What's up traders, Eric here with MajorLeagueTrading.com and we got some volatility coming into this market. Now, with this, uh, you know, with the S&Ps here, you really can't see the percentage change on that on the day because um, it's after 6 o'clock, futures have already reopened here. But just taking a look here at the SPY, I mean, we're talking 1.38%. Um, and hopefully you guys cannot hear Ranger at my feet chewing on this bone. But uh, big move relative to where we have been, like, you know, over the last couple of weeks, we really haven't seen very many pullbacks. You know, if we look at uh, just overall daily chart here, you know, you can see this is probably one of the bigger moves, right? We had this big red bar from, you know, a week and a half or so ago. Uh, we had this small little pullback over here and here, but other than that, like we've just been like even this red bar gets just straight reversed, red bar, straight reversed. Um, and that's kind of been the theme here. So the question becomes is like, okay, is that going to be the same thing here, you know, going into tomorrow, right? Uh, and I think there's maybe the possibility of that for sure. Well, let's just be honest. The market can do whatever it wants to do tomorrow um, or any day for that matter. But, you know, I think looking across the board of this, like, okay, Qs are down 1.56% here. IWM, this is the big one for me. Uh, okay. You got to take this bone somewhere. Uh, IWM is a big one here. I mean, this thing was down 4.11% on the day. I mean, this is... Uh, this is a big move, right? Like there's just no, I mean, think about that, right? <laughs> the the Qs in and of themselves here are down 1.5% on the day. The Russell was down 4.11%, like almost three times the movement that the, the Russell saw. Um, so I think that's really telling. I don't know exactly what it means overall, uh, but I think that one is, is important to watch here and just note the differences in these movements, right? Like, okay, Dow 1.36%. That's normal, right? Normal relative to, you know, what we're doing, right? So, uh, I'm going to be cautious with just how big of a move we ended up getting out of the Russell here. You know, and when you, when you look across the board at just the futures, we'll pull these over. Um, you know, normally uh, we get, you know, one, two, maybe three levels on a day, right? That we can, that we can really work with for today. Those were, you know, 74 quarters and then 48 75s for the S and P's. And I, I thought we were going to try and make a push up into, you know, 5,006 at one point on the day. That's where I was really thinking we would move. Um, but when you look at something like the NASDAQ here today, I mean, this thing was basically trading you know across the board almost four different levels here uh and we even broke through a couple on the way down this morning just given you know the size of the move in which we saw from from cpi right so let's not discount by any means just how big of a move this was uh and you know, we ultimately ended up closing basically you know right at kind of what the start of or finish of if you will uh, that move ultimately ends up getting us. So there's a big, big range across the board, 249 and three quarters of a point here for the NASDAQ. Um, and so the question becomes is like, okay, where do we go from here? Well, I think longs are, I think longs are tough because we did get this little end of day rally here. A close at lows today would have been much better than, you know, this 130 point rally back from lows. Um, so again, with that being said, going into tomorrow, I'm still looking for just a little bit more data here. Uh, something that I noted too as well today that we saw was a big move down in gold. And this one's actually staying weak compared to the overall market. So the markets and gold moved together, but then gold didn't get that rally back with the rest of the markets, right? So we're in this, we're in this position, we're in this time where it's like, we got to start looking across the board and seeing anything that stands out that didn't quite do maybe what we think it should do or what the, the, the rest of the things in which are doing. Right. Um, and that's the only thing in which I can take from this information. Right. So 
I can see a case where we do try and rally and then fail that. Um, but I also think in order to rally, we have to maybe test back towards lows again, just given the rally in which we saw here towards the end of the day. So it's going to be a really, really interesting uh, kind of sequence of events of how this you know, ultimately plays out on the week. And then that brings us back to the SPX. Um, and I still am kind of of the belief and the thought process that we'll try and push back to up towards the $5,000 number here this week for OPEX. So going into tomorrow, uh, my plan would be to watch for some sort of retest of these lows. And then from that point, a failure of the breakdown, if you will, a failure of the breakdown towards these lows that can then work back into an uptrend, get us up here back towards 5,000 for the SPX, right? So we've got plenty of room to move. I mean, we're talking, you know, over the, the last two days, we've had 130 points worth of range, a big portion of that becoming, you know, coming from the gap and all that. Um, but there's going to be, like I said, no shortage of volatility there. Uh, and when we take a look at this, like, okay, cool. We got a pretty decent spike out of the VIX here today. I mean, that VIX at one point was pushing towards 18, uh, you know, pulled back towards 16 there at, at the close. Uh, but this is exactly the type of thing in which we want to see, right? This is going to provide us some opportunity uh, in these markets. Uh, and the one trade in which I was ultimately able to participate in today actually turned out to be really, really nice. So um, I'll leave you guys with this, which no surprise, <laughs> was just a divergence on the day again as well, uh, which was ultimately from right down in here. So I was waiting for, you know, 1970.10s here uh, in which to take long positions off the Russell, off of anything, uh, according to the divergence. And you can see NASDAQ was actually the one that was holding up the best here. Uh, with the lows being held, trying to hold the opening print, the level, all the things. Um, so I did scalp a couple of points out of the Russell here. I was looking for a retest or something in order to get a new position back on and just never got it. Uh, and then I was able to take the S&Ps here from 49.70 halves um, along with you know this Russell here as well. And I got my first exit on these. Uh, I think it was right here. Yeah, right here. Uh, when S and P's pushed up, we got these new highs and you can see that the NASDAQ didn't. Uh, so I got out at 83 fifties, 83 quarters on those. Uh, it's in the chat if you want to go back and check it, uh, for the first exit on those. And then the back half of that position ended up trailing, I think it's 77 half, 77 quarters, something like that. Uh, somewhere down in here, I just put stops in and then I just left the desk and let it, let it do its thing. Right. With the targets above at five zero zero sixes. So um anyways those were you know ultimately the trades of the day they took some patience right and i think that's going to ultimately be the thing going into tomorrow as well uh is that we're going to have to be patient with these setups I'll let it try and fake most people in for a potential long tomorrow come down tag those lows and then start to reverse from there if in fact it does want to do that right so anyways uh that's what i got for tonight here I'll update all of these levels, drop them in the Discord as always. Um, and yeah, we're going to get some volatility in this market, and I am excited to see it. So uh, thank you guys so much as always, and I will catch you guys on the next video. Peace.